On December 21st, 1994, Norwegian and American scientists sent out a launch notification to 30 European countries, including Russia, informing them of a future rocket launch of a very large four-stage sounding rocket on a mission to study the Northern Lights. This would be the largest rocket to be launched from Norway. Unfortunately, the Russian military did not get this message. This is what happened. January 25th, 1995. The newly formed Russian Federation is facing instability as well as humiliating losses in Chechnya. And the Black Brant 12 Southern rocket is launched from the Andola rocket range in Norway. Seconds after the launch, officers at the Olengorsk early warning radar station detected the rapidly accelerating rocket going into the atmosphere. The rocket trajectory looked very hostile to the Russian officers. To them, this looked like either an initial EMP missile launch, a submarine launched Trident missile, or an ICBM launched from North Dakota. They alerted the general command post by activating the Kroka system. The Kroka system displayed a missile threat warning on a giant screen in the command post showing the rocket's trajectory. 96 seconds after the launch, the Black Brant 12 went higher and higher and then started going through its stages. Seeing this serious threat before their eyes, they then in turn activated the Kesbeck system. Once the Kesbeck system was activated, every nuclear weapon forces were put on high alert and full combat readiness. Submarine commanders had their keys in, ready to turn. ICBM missile launch stations were ready for the codes, and land-based tactical nukes were ready to strike. And the Shagat, or nuclear briefcase, was delivered to Russian President Boris Yeltsin. The Minister of Defense Pavel Gretchev and General Mikhail Kalishnikov also received their own Shagats. This was the first and only time any nuclear briefcase from any country was activated. The nuclear briefcase features a screen that displays the same information as what was being displayed by the Kroka system. Below the screens are several buttons that offer options for nuclear strike. These options range from limited strikes to selected countries and regions to a full nuclear attack on every military, civilian, and economic targets of the United States, NATO, and their allies. The Shagat also establishes a conference call between Boris Yeltsin, Pavel Gratchev, and General Mikhail Kolesnikov, each who had a nuclear briefcase of their own in front of them. They watched the rocket splitting up thinking that this was an MRV, or a multiple reentry vehicle. The pressure was mounting upon them with a grim decision to make. Gretschev and Kalinsnikov advised Yeltsin to launch based on doctrine. They each had the technical capability to launch, but only the president had the legal authorization to launch the nuclear weapons. Russian and American doctrine at the time utilized the launch on warning method, meaning that a nuclear strike could be launched in retaliation before incoming missiles had reached their targets. Yeltsin only had a few minutes to make the correct decision. Although the screen in front of him showed a potential incoming strike and his advisors told him to launch, he waited, and Russian satellites did not indicate any ICBM launches from the mainland USA. And while Russia was still suspicious of the United States, it did not make much sense to the Russian president for a nuclear strike to be launched from them. The rocket is still heading upwards and the general was adamant that this was indeed a prelude to a nuclear strike. Yeltsin decided to wait a little more observing the rocket trajectory. And after a few more minutes, the rocket trajectory was now heading away from Russia and no other nuclear missiles has been detected. Reports were coming in from military bases that they are safe, no nuclear attack has happened, and there's no nuclear missiles inbound. It was now clear that this was not a U.S. missile strike and the nuclear option was called off. Yeltsin and Kalishnikov came to the conclusion that this was a form of Western aggression. 
This was the first time a large rocket has been launched from this location, so large that it required stages. This could be NATO testing the responsiveness of Russia and possibly a prelude of a future attack. Determined to expose the missile ploy, the next day in a planned speech about the economy, Yeltsin went off topic and shocked his audience about the nuclear episode he had earlier. Yesterday, I used for the first time the black suitcase I always have with me. We followed closely and found out where and when the rocket was going to land. We followed it from beginning to end. Those who launched the missile clearly did not expect us to detect the missile on our radar. Maybe someone had decided to test us out. However, most of the world's media considered this to be propaganda and an effort to show that the Russian military was not weak after the humiliating losses in Chechnya. Eventually, it was found out that some Russian officials got the message, but it was not properly relayed to the Russian military or the Russian radar crews. After this, Russia, NATO, and the United States reviewed and revised their communication procedures to prevent another incident like this from ever happening again. This will conclude our episode for today, but I would like to know what you think about the situation. Could this have been a form of Western aggression, or was it sheer Russian bureaucracy not properly relaying the messages? Please comment below on your thoughts, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more interesting stories. Thanks for watching, and remember to live for the adventure. Bye-bye.